getting his feet a bit dirty and uh, I'm going to just stop on this side here and see what comes out. I'm going to start taking a few photographs as well. Um, Herman is going to help Marco just to change the sound around. We're going to get the vehicle down. So it's a bit of alternative Saturday afternoon fun for us. So just go with us. Might be a few shakes and wobbles along the way. But ultimately, we get to have fun. We're going to learn a few things in the process. And uh, while these guys are fixing the sound for us, I'm going to quickly take a few photographs. And, uh, and yeah, let's just have fun. That's essentially why we're here. Um, we're all just grown up kids in the end. Let's go play in the water and see what's in there. Well, just to uh, keep in mind, Yuri will tell you more about what's in there. Keep in mind, catfish can survive quite easily two or three years without water. When this pan dries up, they can bury themselves in the mud and survive there quite comfortably. They could survive on land probably for a week if they had some shade. So there's no danger to them. It's just interesting to see what's in here. No terrapins, no pl uh, platana. No pilapils, sir. No. I'm not 100 percent sure. They normally cat um, sharp tooth catfish, but these are mottled, so I think these are mottled catfish. Uh, sharp tooth one, if you stick your finger in the mouth, they will bite you. Yes. This one will try to bite you, but it's got fine. Yeah, I'll take but, your word on that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, this is one of the things I'm going to learn a lot this afternoon as well from Yuri. So. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. It does actually bite, it's got a proper grip to yeah, it. Yeah, it's like sandpaper. But it's exactly like sandpaper. You pull the yeah. bottom lip down and look down there. Eh? Yeah. So he, he uses that to, he's really eating detritus, whatever rotting stuff is down there. He doesn't, it's so rotting that he doesn't need to tear it apart with sharp teeth or anything. It's gobbling. Yeah, it's a total carrion eating literally detritus, like rotting whatever. And this he feels with, I mean literally that's like 
That's right. Eyes are, as you can imagine, in that water, not very important. The most important sense is being uh, smell, and you can see his nostrils, quite extensive. Yeah. And, um, and then his whiskers, which have a series of sense organs from tactile to um, chemical, basically. Like oh, chemical smell. as well? Yeah, so like, like an extended tongue in a way. Yeah. All right. Um, then uh, perhaps other interesting feature is that it's got these pectoral fins. If you look at them, there's a very solid, hard, sharp bone there that's locked at the moment. Second. You know, there's unlocked, there's locks. Let me go again, sir, yeah, Mr. So if you look, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. locks. Yeah, you can yeah. actually feel it lock, it goes click. Jeez, like, yeah, you it's like that, a mechanical, eh? it's like, yeah. a, like a proper socket in there. And that's obviously what it uses for swimming, but more interestingly, it also uses for walking. So I'll put it down just now and you'll and see the how they, and they can actually go quite long distances. Along this record, it is about four kilometers that they've walked. You can see very clearly mottled, so because of the yeah, normally the, the the sharp tooth one is just like a darker gray. It's, it's almost a dark, like a darker mottled exactly. color, but all over. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, in a dam like this, it's usually the only fish you'll find a uh, a very important food source for all kinds of things, stalks and um, uh, fish eagle especially. Okay, now let me do, I'll just put it down and you'll see how it will start walking. Or not. Yeah, it's like the terrapins, you often do the thing. Look at how terrapins conflict themselves, you put them in their shell and they just lie there. Yeah, okay, let's put them a bit closer to the water. Yeah, yeah. Somebody shoot. <laughs> <laughs> 